Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste. We carry forward our discussion on the special topic and today we'll have a look at the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. Now we are looking at this act in great detail today so that you can have an idea of what an act looks like, how an act is arranged. So this is our first act that we are taking up in this course in which we'll look at it section by section. So this is the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. It was enacted in 1960. So this is what an act looks like. It begins with a table of contents, the arrangement of sections. The act is divided into several different chapters and each chapter has several sections. Now typically the first two sections would be very similar in most of the acts. The first section in nearly all the acts is the short title extent and commencement. That is how you are going to refer to this act, where does it uh, apply to, what is the geographical area, geographical extent and from what date is this act going to be applicable. And section 2 is definitions. So basically these two sections are what you will find commonly the same in most of the acts. So there is these different chapters and different sections. Then if you look at the beginning of the act, this is how it starts. The Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960, Act number 59 of 1960. So we have also seen that whenever in any document we are referring to the IPC, we also refer to as Act number so and so of 1860. And similarly, here we are saying that this is Act number 59. So, this is the 59th Act of this year. And then there is a date. Then you have the preamble of the Act. So, this portion between this date and the first chapter, this is known as the preamble. Now, what is a preamble? A preamble is something that states at the beginning what this act is about, why it was enacted. Now a preamble is an intrinsic aid to understand the sections. So basically if there is any doubt about what a particular section means, then the court can always go back to the preamble to see if it matches the preamble or not. And if there are two meanings, the one that closely matches the preamble or closely satisfies the preamble is the one that the court will take to be the correct meaning. Now this act is saying an act to prevent the infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering on animals. So why is this act enacted? To prevent the infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering on animals. And for that purpose to amend the law relating to the prevention of cruelty to animals. So this is the first objective to prevent infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering on, anim on animals and this is the second objective for this purpose to amend the law relating to the prevention of cruelty to animals. So it is amending a previous law. So there should be an earlier law and we will find that there is an earlier law which this act changed, be it enacted by the parliament in the 11th year of the Republic of India as follows. So this is a normal legal language that this act was enacted by the parliament. This is not by a state legislature, it is by the parliament. When was it enacted? In the 11th year of the Republic of India. So India became a republic in 1950. And so 
1960 is the 11th year because 1950 is the first year so 1960 becomes the 11th year so in the 11th year of the republic of india this is enacted chapter 1 preliminary so this you will find commonly in mo most of the acts the section 1 is short title extent and commencement this act may be called the prevention of cruelty to animals act 1960 so this is the name of the act it extends to the whole of india earlier it said these words except the state of jammu and kashmir but they have been enacted by act 34 of 2019 so this is the reorganization act of jammu and kashmir and here again you are not referring to it by the full name but you are referring to it as act 34 of 2019 similar to what we saw here act 59 of 1960 in the same tone it is saying it has been omitted by act 34 of 2019 section 95 and the fifth schedule now we have seen this portion before in the case of ipc as well so the ipc also said that it extends to the whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir and we saw that by the uh, act of the parliament the jammu and kashmir reorganization act 2019 this portion except the state of jammu and kashmir it was omitted and similar we are seeing here as well so you have the short title you have the extent and then commencement when does it come to force it shall come into force on such date as the central government may by notification in the official gazette appoint and different dates may be appointed for different states and for the different provisions contained in this act now in some of the acts you will find the language that this act will come into force on the date of publication in the official gazette on the government gazette so that is one way of enacting so in that case the day on which it was uh, published that would be taken to be the date of enactment but in this case it says it shall come into force on such date as the central government may by notification in the official gazette appoint so it is leaving it to the central government to decide the date and different dates may be appointed for different states it is not necessary that all over india it should be applicable from a single date and not only for a state but even within a state for different provisions you can have different dates so it leaves it to the central government and here you are seeing that by these notifications it was enacted or it came into force for different states so for instance it says on 1st of september 1961 by notification number this dated this for chapters 1 and 2 in respect of the state of assam andhra pradesh bihar and so on now section 2 in most of the acts is definitions so it defines certain terms for example it says in this act unless the context otherwise requires animal means any living creature other than a human being now there can be several definitions of an animal you can have a biological definition but in this case it is saying that we are defining animal in such a way we all know that humans are also animals but this particular act is excluding human beings from the definition of animal so in this case animal means any living creature other than a human being board means the board established under section 4 as reconstituted from time to time under section 5a captive animal means any animal not being a domestic animal so basically if you have a domestic animal you won't call it a captive animal which is in captivity or confinement whether permanent or temporary or which is subjected to any appliance or contrivance for the purpose of hindering or preventing its escape from captivity or confinement or which is pinioned pinioned means which is held down by some force or which is or appears to be maimed that is if there is an animal that has been injured it has been maimed so that it cannot run away so all of these things will make an animal a captive animal 
then domestic animal means any animal which is tamed or which has been or is being sufficiently tamed to serve some purpose for the use of man or which although it neither has been or nor is being nor is intended to be so tamed is or has become in fact wholly or partly tamed now why do we have such definitions which are so complicated these are just to ensure that nobody takes or misuses any of these as a loophole so basically the law makers have to ensure that there are no loopholes as far as possible so to cover these loopholes they define it in these terms which is tamed so that would mean a tamed animal or a domestic animal but it also says which has been or is being sufficiently tamed so even if you have an animal and you are taming that animal but it has not completely become became tame so in that case also you'll put it in the category of domestic animal why is this taming done to serve some purpose for the use of man or which although it neither has been nor is being nor is intended to be so tamed so there can be an animal whom a person has not tamed nor is it being tamed so it is not in the process of being tamed there is also no intention to tame that animal but if it is or has become in fact wholly or partly tamed then do you will put it in the category of domestic animal so that people cannot uh, misuse this provision and say that this animal was not tamed by us so to exclude such circumstances the law makers explain things in great detail in the definitions and this is why definitions become very important then you have local authority local authority means a municipal committee district board or other authority for the time being invested by law with the control and administrator administration of any matters within a specified local area owner used with reference to an animal includes not only the owner but also any other person for the time being in possession or custody of the animal whether with or without the consent of the owner meaning if you have a dog and this dog is in the custody of somebody maybe your friend or maybe your servant then to those people will also come in the category of owner so that if the law says that the owner has to take care of the animal you cannot take the plea that at that particular point of time the animal was not with me it was with my such and such colleague so if something wrong happens then that colleague becomes responsible he also cannot say that no this is not my animal this is such and such person's animal no the law says that owner includes not only the owner but also any other person for the time being in possession or custody of the animal so if you have the animal in your possession that is if you own the animal or if you have it in your possession or if you have it in your custody then for the purpose of this act you are the owner for the purposes of another act you may not be the owner but for the purpose of this particular act you will be deemed to be the owner now in this case it says whether with or without the consent of the owner so basically if somebody has taken your animal without your consent then to he or she has been given certain duties in this act and he or she will be liable fuka includes or dome dev includes any process of introducing air or any substance into the female organ of a milk animal with the object of drawing off from the animal any secretion of milk and later on in, in this act it outlaws it prescribed means prescribed by the rules made under this act street me includes any way now when it says includes so it means that this list is not exhaustive street can also include something else as well so street includes any way road lane square court alley passage or open space whether a through fair or not to which the public have access so basically in our general day to day life we will not call an open space a street 
will not call a court a street or a square a street but this act for its purposes it includes all of these in the definition of a street as well now in cases where you have uh, acts on concurrent subjects you can also have state amendments so karnataka has amended section 2 to include something else as well so the central act does not define bulls race or bullock cart race or things like kambala but the karnataka state has added these into the definitions maharashtra again has added these things into the definition then section 3 says duties of person having charge of animals it shall be the duty of every person having the care or charge of any animal to take all reasonable measures to ensure the well-being of such animal and to prevent the infliction upon such animal of unnecessary pain or suffering so if you have the charge of any animal if you are taking care of any animal it is your duty so it is putting a duty so the violation of a duty will be will become a wrong so it is the duty of every person who is having the care or charge of an animal to take all reasonable measures to ensure the well being of such animal and to prevent the infliction upon such animal of unnecessary pain or suffering so it says reasonable measures your measures cannot be unreasonable then here again you have certain state amendments now we move to chapter 2 animal welfare board of india section 4 says establishment of animal welfare board of india so this is a board which is established by this particular act for the promotion of animal welfare generally and for the purpose of protecting animals from being subjected to unnecessary pain or suffering in particular there shall be established by the central government as soon as may be after the commencement of this act a board to be called the animal welfare board of india the board shall be a body corporate now what is a body corporate it means a corporation or a company so this board will legally be a company a body corporate having perpetual succession that is somebody will always be in charge of it and a common seal with power subject to the provisions of this act to acquire hold and dispose of property and may by its name sue and be sued so this is this animal welfare board is a company it is going to exist at all times it has a common seal with the power subject to the provisions to acquire property so it can get a property say by donations or by purchase it can hold on to that property and it can dispose of its property and it may sue somebody in its name and it can also be sued because it's a company so this is section 4 then section 5 says who will be the members constitution of the board the board shall consist of the following persons so it says the inspector general of forest government of india who is ex officio a member of this board ex officio means by the holding of this post of inspector general of forest this person automatically becomes a member of the board similarly the animal husbandry commissioner of to the government of india he is also ex officio two persons to rep- represent respectively the ministers of the central government dealing with home affairs and education to be appointed by the central government and so on so the list continues so it is now describing who are the members of this board then there can be a reconstitution of the board in order that the chairman and other members of the board hold office till the same date and that their terms of office come to an end on the same date the central government may by notification in official gazette reconstitute as soon as may be after the prevention of cruelty to animals amendment act 1982 comes into force the board so basically the board can be reconstituted by the central government then it describes the term of office and conditions of service of members of the board will not look into it in more detail then it says secretary and other employees of the board 
so the central government shall appoint the secretary of the board shall appoint means the central government has to appoint it is mandatory for the central government to appoint the secretary of the board then it talks about the funds of the board so the board can get funds from grants made to it from time to time by the government and of contributions donations subscriptions bequests gifts and the like made to it by any local authority or by any person so any local authority or the government or any person can give funding to the board now because board is a company so it can take these funds from any of these people then we have the functions of the board the functions of the board shall be to keep in the law in force in india for the prevention of cruelty to animals under constant study and advise the government on the amendments to be undertaken in such law from time to time so that is the first and the foremost function that to do a constant study of the law in force for the prevention of cruelty to animals and advise the government what else needs to be done what are the amendments that have to be undertaken then second to advise the central government so we are seeing that a major chunk of the board's uh, functions is to advise to advise the central government on the making of rules under this act with a view to preventing unnecessary pain or suffering and so on to advise the government or any local authority or other person on improvement in the design of vehicles so as to lessen the burden on draught animals that is animals that are used for transportation such as in a bullock cart so how can you design the vehicle that is the bullock cart so that the burden on the animals is reduced so here again it has an advisory role then to take all such steps as the board may think fit for the amelioration of animals by encouraging or providing for the construction of shed water trough and the like and by providing for veterinary assistance to animals so these are all functions of the board again to advise the government or any other local authority or other person in the design of slaughter houses or in the maintenance of slaughter houses or in connection with the slaughter of animals so that unnecessary pain or suffering whether physical or mental is eliminated in the pre slaughter stages as far as possible and the animals are killed whenever wherever necessary in as humane a matter, manner as possible so even in the case of those animals that you are slaughtering or you are killing then to you need to ensure that be, that before the animal is slaughtered it is not put to any pain or suffering and even during the process of slaughtering it has to be as humane as possible in most of the cases it means that when you are keeping the animal for slaughtering then before the slaughter it should not be able to see or hear the animals being slaughtered otherwise it will feel afraid if you are slaughtering the animal then before slaughtering you should probably give it a bolt so that it loses its consciousness it stops feeling the pain and only then slaughter the animal so that it does not go through unnecessary pain or suffering so this board is also mandated to advise the government and local authorities and persons on these matters then to take all such steps as the board may think fit to ensure that unwanted animals are destroyed by local authorities whenever it is necessary to do so either instantaneously or after being rendered insensible to pain or suffering to encourage by grant of financial assistance or otherwise the formation or establishment of pinjara poles now pinjara poles are uh, places where animals are kept or rescue homes or animal shelters sanctuaries and the like where animals and birds may find a shelter when they have become old or useless or when they need protection to cooperate with and coordinate the work of associations or bodies established for the purpose of preventing unnecessary pain or suffering to animals to give financial or as other assistance to animal welfare organizations 
to advise the government on matters relating to medical care and attention to impart education in relation to humane treatment of animals to advise the government on any matter connected with animal welfare or the prevention of infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering on animals so basically the board has very wide ranging functions it is to advise the government local bodies and other persons and at the same time it is also authorized to create certain facilities by funding them and this is why the board has been given the powers to acquire property hold property or retain property and dispose of the property so these are the functions then the power of the board to make regulations the board may subject to the previous approval of the central government make such regulations as it may think fit for the administration of its affairs and for carrying out its functions so it can regulate its own functions then chapter 3 talks about cruelty to animals generally what is treating animals cruelly it includes th things like beating kicking overriding overdriving overloading torturing or otherwise treating any animal so as to subject it to unnecessary pain or suffering or causes or being the owner permitting any animal to be so treated so even if you are not beating the animal but if you are the owner that is if we go back to the definition of owner you have the custody of this animal at any point of time and being the owner you are permitting the animal to be treated by others in the in this manner then you will also be held liable employees in any work or labor or for any purpose any animal which by reason of its age or disease infirmity wound sore or other cause is unfit to be so employed or being the owner permits any such unfit animal to be so, so employed so you have to take work but in a humane manner willfully and unreasonably administers any injurious drug or injurious uh, substance to any animal or willfully and unreasonably causes or attempts to cause any such drug or substance to be taken by any animal conveys or carries whether in or upon any vehicle or not any animal in such a manner or position as to subject it to unnecessary pain or suffering so all of these are relating to the pain and suffering of animals keeps or confines any animal in any cage or other receptacle which does not measure sufficiently in height length and breadth to permit the animal a reasonable opportunity for movement keeps for an unreasonable time any animal chained or tethered upon an unreasonably short or unreasonably heavy chain or cord even that is treating the animal cruelly being the owner neglects to exercise or cause to be exercised reasonably any dog habitually chained up or kept in close confinement so it is your duty to exercise your dogs if you do not do that you are treating the animal cruelly if you put a heavy chain on your animal you are treating it cruelly if you keep the animal tethered on a very short chain you are treating it cruelly being the owner of any animal fails to provide such animal with sufficient food drink or shelter without reasonable cause abandons any animal in circumstances which render it likely that it will suffer pain by reason of starvation or thirst so basically if you have an animal whether it's a pet animal or a work animal you are not allowed to abandon that animal you just cannot leave it outside willfully permits any animal of which he is the owner to go at large in any street while the animal is affected with contagious or infectious disease or without reasonable excuse permits any diseased or disabled animal of which he is the owner to die in any street so if your animal is diseased you cannot let it roam in the street or let it die in the street offers for sale or without reasonable cause has in his possession any animal which is suffering pain by reason of mutilation starvation thirst overcrowding or other ill treatment mutilates any animal or kills any animal including stray dogs by using the method of strychnine injections in the heart or any other unnecessarily cruel manner 
so even if you are killing the animal it has to be humane it cannot be unnecessarily cruel you cannot mutilate an animal solely with a view to providing entertainment confines or causes to be confined any animal including tying of an animal as a bait in a tiger or other sanctuary so as to make it an object of prey for any other animal but this is solely with a view to providing entertainment what it means is in the olden days what used to happen is if you went to a national park or a sanctuary or a tiger reserve people would keep an animal tied as a bait for the tiger so there would be things like tiger shows so there would be an animal that is tied to at a location and every day the tiger would come and kill that animal and people would sit around and see this animal getting killed just for entertainment now this law made it illegal it said that you are treating that animal cruelly because you are solely with a view to providing entertainment you are uh, causing the uh, the animal to be confined so as to make it an object of prey for other animals but this is this only is there if you are doing it for the purpose of providing entertainment now in a large number of cases to capture an animal the forest department may use an animal as a bait for example if a tiger has entered into a human habitation then to capture that tiger the forest department might use an animal for as a bait so that the tiger enters into a cage and gets trapped and then it can be removed but that is not for the purpose of entertainment so that this law says it is not cruelty but if you do it for entertainment it's cruelty similarly incites any animal to fight or bait any other animal with a view of providing entertainment then that is treating it cruelly organizes keeps uses or acts in the management of any place for animal fighting or for the purpose of baiting any animal or permits or offers any place to be so used or receives money for the admission of any other person to any place kept or used for any such purposes so if you are using a space or you are permitting to use a space for these purposes it is cruel treatment promotes or takes part in any shooting match or competition wherein animals are released from captivity for the purpose of such shooting this is treating an animal cruelly he shall be punishable so if you do any of these things it is punishable but then if you look at the offenses you will find that these are these do not entail a very heavy penalty in the case of a first offense with a fine which shall not be less than 10 rupees but which may extend to 50 rupees so in the case of first offense there is only a fine between 10 and 50 rupees that's all in the case of a second or subsequent offense committed within 3 years of the previous offense with a fine which shall not be less than 25 rupees but which may extend to 100 rupees or with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 months or with both so basically the punishments are not large but at least this act says that these things are illegal then the subsection 2 says for the purpose of subsection 1 an owner shall be deemed to have committed an offence if he has failed to exercise reasonable care and supervision with a view to the prevention of such offence provided that where an owner is convicted of permitting cruelty by reason only of having failed to exercise such care and supervision he shall not be liable to imprisonment without the option of a fine so basically as an owner if you have taken reasonable precautions and then do things happen then you will not be punished harshly then subsection 3 says nothing in this section shall apply to dehorning of cattle or the castration or branding or nose roping of any animal in the prescribed manner now this these prescriptions were later on made the destruction of stray dogs in lethal chambers or by such other methods as may be prescribed so these methods were prescribed in the annual birth control rules 
द एक्सटर्मिनेशन और डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ एनी एनिमल अंडर द अथॉरिटी ऑफ एनी लॉ फॉर द टाइम बींग इन फोर्स एनी मैटर डेल्ट विथ इन चैप्टर फोर और द कमीशन और ओमिशन ऑफ एनी एक्ट इन द कोर्स ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्शन और द प्रिपरेशन फॉर डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ एनी एनिमल एज फूड फॉर मैन काइंड अनलेस सच डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ प्रिपरेशन वॉज अकम्पनीड बाई द इन्फ्लिक्शन ऑफ अननेसेसरी पेन और सफरिंग सो दीज आर द एक्सेप्शंस देन अगेन देर आर स्टेट अमेंडमेंट्स देन देर इज पेनाल्टी फॉर प्रैक्टिसिंग फूका और डोमडेव destruction of suffering animals so it provides for the animals destruction so if there is an animal that is suffering then it is lawful for a court so when the owner of an animal is convicted of an offence under section 11 which is cruelty it shall be lawful for the court if the court is satisfied that it would be cruel to keep the animal alive to direct that the animal be destroyed and to assign the animal to any suitable person for that purpose and the person to whom such animal is so assigned shall as soon as possible destroy such animal or cause such animal to be destroyed in his presence without unnecessary suffering and any reasonable expense incurred in destroying the animal may be ordered by the court to be recovered from the owner as if it were a fine so it also provides for destruction of animals if they are in a very bad shape then it says that if a police officer above the rank of a constable or any person authorized by the state government in this behalf finds an animal that is so diseased or so severely injured in such a physical condition that in its in that in his opinion it cannot be moved removed with without cruelty may if the owner is absent or refuses his consent to the destruction of the animal forthwith summon the veterinary officer in charge of the area in which the animal is found and upon uh, the certificate of the veterinary officer that the animal is mortally injured or severely injured or in such physical condition that it would be cruel to keep it alive then the police officer or the person authorized may after obtaining orders from a magistrate destroy the animal or cause it to be destroyed in the manner as prescribed then we have chapter 4 experimentation on animals so section 14 permits certain experiments nothing contained in this act shall render unlawful the performance of experiments including experiments of involving operations on animals for the purpose of advancement by new discovery or of physiological knowledge or of knowledge which will be useful for saving or prolonging life or alleviating suffering or for combating any disease whether of human beings animals or plants so experiments are permitted but with certain restrictions or regulations so you have a committee for the control and supervision of experiments on animals you have sub committees the uh, this committee shall have certain staff to help it then you have duties of the committee powers of the committee to make rules power of entry and inspection so if there is a place where experiments are going on then the committee can enter that place it can inspect there is power to prohibit experiments on animals and then there are certain penalties then chapter 5 deals with performing animals so basically if you have visited a circus or you have visited people who are exhibiting animals such as bears or monkeys then that comes under this chapter of performing animals so it defines exhibit and train exhibit means exhibit at any entertainment to which the public are admitted through sales of tickets and train means train for the purpose of such exhibition and expressions exhibitor and trainer have respectively the corresponding meanings then there is restriction on exhibition and training of performing animals so if somebody has to exhibit or train these animals then this person has to be registered then you have certain state amendments then it says procedure for registration power of court to prohibit or restrict exhibition and training power to enter premises then it lists the offenses and then provide certain exemptions 
nothing contained in this chapter shall apply to the training of animals for bona fide military or police purposes or the exhibition of any animals so trained and any animals kept in any zoological garden which is a zoo or by any society or association which has for its principal object the exhibition of animals for educational or scientific purposes so basically animals that are trained for military or police purposes or to be kept in zoos or for educational and scientific purposes that is permissible that is not governed by this chapter it is governed by something else then chapter 6 is miscellaneous sections savings as respects manner of killing prescribed by religion nothing contained in this act shall render it an offence to kill an animal in a manner required by the religion of any community so it must be a, a manner required by the religion you cannot just do anything and say that it is because of the religion it should be required by the religion then we have power of court to deprive person convicted of ownership of animal so if the owner is found guilty then the court may deprive the person of the ownership then presumption as to guilt in certain cases if any person is charged with the offence of killing a goat cow or its progeny so only for these three categories of animals goat cow or its progeny contrary to the provisions of clause l of sub section 1 of section 11 so if you have to read this you will have to go back to section 11 so this is section 11 sub section 1 and then clause l l says mutilates any animal or kills any animal including stray dogs by using the method of strychnine injections in the heart or in any other unnecessarily cruel manner so in these cases when the person is charged with killing of goat cow or its progeny contrary to these provisions that is we are saying that the person has killed these three categories of animals in an unnecessarily cruel manner and it is proved that such person had in his possession at the time the offence is alleged to have been committed the skin of any such animal as is referred to in this section with any part of the skin attached uh, of skin of the head attached thereto it shall be presumed until the contrary is proved that such animal was killed in a cruel manner so basically if you have the skin to which the skin of head is attached and if you are charged then you will have to prove that that particular animal was not killed in a cruel manner otherwise there is a presumption as to guilt then it makes things cognizable cognizable means that a police officer can arrest a person for these particular sections and can also uh, so he can arrest without a warrant and can begin an investigation without take permission from the court so cognizable offenses are basically graver offenses in which to arrest somebody you don't require a warrant and uh, that is the the police officer does not require a warrant and to start an investigation the police officer does not need a prior permission of the court now this section 31 is saying not with the standing anything contained in the code of criminal procedure 1898 an offence punishable under clause l n or clause o of sub section 1 of section 11 or under section 12 shall be a cognizable offence within the meaning of that code so it is making these things cognizable then we have power of search and seizure search warrants general power of seizure for examination treatment and care of animals limitation of prosecutions now here again the things are very lenient because limitation of prosecution says a prosecution for an offence against this act shall not be instituted after the expiration of 3 months from the date of commission of the offence so any prosecution has to begin before the expiration of 3 months then you have delegation of powers power to make rules 
and then uh, rules and regulations to be laid before the parliament. Then we have persons authorized under section 34 to be public servants. Now the IPC defines who is a public servant, section 21 of the IPC and section 39 is saying that persons who are authorized under section 34 shall be deemed to be a public servant. Then it has an indemnity clause that is if uh, these people do something wrong even though they have done it in good faith. then they will not be held liable. So, no suit, prosecution or other legal proceedings shall lie against any person who is or who is deemed to be a public servant within the meaning of section 21 of the IPC respect of anything in, in good faith done or intended to be done under this act. So, this is an indemnity clause. And finally, we have the repeal. So, when it said that it wants to amend the previous act, we saw that in the preamble, here in the final section we have the repeal of act 11 of 1890. So, before this act came into being, we had the prevention of cruelty to animals act 1890, which is repealed upon the uh, coming into force of this particular act. So, this is how a, an act looks like. Now, when it says that the central government has the power to make rules, then what does that mean? So, here we can see the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act and the rules made under it. So, these are several rules that were made by the government. We have Animal Birth Control Dog Rules 2009, Animal Welfare Board Administration Rules 1962 breeding of and experiments on animals control and supervision amendment rules. Then you have things like prevention of cruelty capture of animals rules. You have things like animal birth control uh, dog rules 2001 which is a very important rule. Then you have performing animal rules and so on. So, these are all different rules made for different topics. You have things for pet shops, you have things for licensing of farriers. Now, farrier is a person who puts a horseshoe on a horse. So, you have a special rule for these kinds of people. You have a, a special rule for application of files. You have rules for registration of performing animals. You have rules for slaughterhouses. You have rules for registration of cattle premises. You have rules for things like the transport of animals. So, rules on different topics have been made under this act. What do these rules look like? So, we will have a look at this rule, Animal Birth Control Dogs Rules 2001. So, it was published in the Gazette of India and it starts like this. Ministry of Culture Notification, New Delhi the 24th of December 2001. Whereas the draft animal birth control dogs rules 2001 were published as required under subsection 1 of section 38 of prevention of cruelty to animals act. So, these rules are being made under subsection 1 of section 38. What is subsection 1 of section 38? This one. So, this is section 38 subsection 1. The central government may by notification in the official gazette and subject to condition of previous publication make rules to carry out the purposes of this act. So, it says that if the central government wants to make the rules, it has to notify it in the official gazette and it is subject to the condition of previous publication and this is what this rule is talking about. That these animal birth control dog draft rules were published as is required and it is now being these final rules are being published in the Gazette of India, in the official Gazette. So, the preamble of these rules looks like this, whereas the draft animal birth control or ABC dog rules were published as required under subsection 1 of section 38 of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, wide Ministry of Culture notification number so and so. And whereas objections and suggestions from all persons likely to be affected thereby were invited before the expiry of 30 days from the date on which the 
copies of the gazette containing the said information have been made available to public and whereas the copies of the said gazette were made available to the public on this date 2nd of November and whereas the objections or suggestions received from the public have been incorporated in the rules now therefore in exercise of the powers conferred by subsection 1 2 of section 38 of the prevention of cruelty to animals act 1960 the government the, the central government hereby makes the following rules now the rules again will move in a very similar manner so the first rule is talking about the short title and commencement similar to what we saw earlier so these rules may be called the animal birth control docs rules 2001 they shall come into force on the date of their final publication in the official gazette what is this date if you move up then you are seeing it here this is the uh, date 24th of december 2001 so on this date the, these rules were published and from this date they come into force then you have the definitions as before classification of dogs and their sterilization so this rule divides all dogs into either pet dogs or street dogs in the case of pet dogs the owners of the pet dogs are responsible for controlled breeding immunization sterilization and licensing in accordance with these rules and the law for the time being enforced within a specified local area and for the street dogs it says the street dogs shall be sterilized and immunized by participation of animal welfare organizations private individuals and the local authority so basically the government cannot sterilize and immunize the street dogs by itself it has to take participation of animal welfare organizations private individuals and the local authority then it constitutes a monitoring committee with the commissioner or the chief of the local authority being the ex officio chairman representative of public health department representative of animal welfare department veterinary doctor representative of the district society for prevention of cruelty to animals spca two representatives from the animal welfare organizations operating within the said locality and representative of the people who is a humanitarian or a well-known individual who has experience in animal welfare in the locality so this is how a monitoring committee will be made under this rule then it is given several functions such as to issue instructions for catching transportation and so on authorize veterinary doctors to decide on case to case basis the need to put to sleep put to sleep is euthanize that is you are killing the animal which animal that is critically ill or fatally injured or rabid by a painless method using sodium pentathol so you cannot use just any method you have to go with this method any other method is strictly prohibited you cannot poison a dog even if it is a rabid dog even if it is critically ill fatally injured whatever be the condition you cannot use any method other than sodium pentathol if you need to put it to sleep and this has to be decided on a case to case basis by a veterinary doctor you cannot take these decisions yourself then create public awareness solicit cooperation funding provide guidelines to dog owners get surveys done take steps for monitoring the dog bite cases keep watch on in national and international development in the field of research pertaining to street dogs control and management development of vaccines cost effective methods of sterilization vaccination and so on then it sets certain obligations of the local authority it talks about capturing sterilization immunization and release of dogs so basically if there is a, any complaint about the uh, dogs and these complaints for which the local authority in consultation with the monitoring committee shall set up a dog control cell to receive complaints about dog nuisance dog bites and information about rabbit dog so upon receive of these complaints only they will act the dog capturing squad shall consist of driver two or more trained employees and a representative of any of the animal welfare organization 
So you cannot have a dog capturing squad without this third party member. Then the dogs shall be captured by using humane methods. And uh, another specific thing is at time only one of lot of dogs shall be brought for sterilization. So you cannot have multiple dogs, many lots brought at the same time. After sterilization, the dogs will be released to the same location. Then the dog kennel must have sufficient space for housing and free movement. Female dogs, if they are found to be pregnant, they will not undergo abortion and sterilization and should be uh, released till they have the litter. So all these things are there. You have to identify and record the dogs. There are options of euthanasia of street dogs. So it says incurably ill and mortally wounded dogs as diagnosed by a qualified veterinarian appointed by the committee. The dog has to be incurably ill such as suffering from cancer or mortally wounded. It is so much wounded that it in any case it is going to die. Only in these two cases is euthanasia of dogs of street dogs permitted that is killing of these street dogs and in both of these cases they have to be diagnosed by a qualified veterinarian appointed by the committee. And then it talks about uh, the administration of sodium pentathol for adult dogs and thiopental in intraperitoneally for the puppies. So it prescribes all of these. Then in the case of furious or dumb rabbit dogs, it says on receipt of complaints, the dog will be caught. It would be taken to a pound where it will be kept in isolation. It will be, sub, uh, be subject to inspection by a panel of two persons, a veterinary surgeon and a representative from the animal welfare organization. And there is, and if there is a high probability that the dog may have rabies, then it would be kept in isolation till it dies a natural death. Because death normally occurs within 10 days of contacting rabies. If the animals are prematurely killed, then you do not get the true incidence of rabies. And so it prescribes that even if it is that if it is a, uh, a rabbit dog, then you have to keep it in isolation till it dies. You are not allowed to kill the dog. And if the dog uh, is found not to have rabies, but some other disease, it would be handed over to the animal welfare organization who will take the necessary action to cure and rehabilitate the dog. So even if this is a very ferocious dog, it has to be rehabilitated. You cannot kill a dog just because it is ferocious. Then it talks about disposal of carcasses, guidelines for breeders and application of rules where local bylaws etc exist. So these are the ABC rules, the ABC dog rules. So in this lecture, we focused our attention on what an act actually looks like, how the rules that are made under an act actually look like and for this purpose, we had a look at the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act and the Animal Birth Control Dog Rules. So that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.